Hello everyone, my name is Robin Springer. On behalf of the VBS TV network, we welcome you, especially young Vietnamese in Vietnam, in the U.S. and in every part of the world to watch this program. We not only offer the latest in economic and business news of Vietnam, the U.S. and across the globe, but also help you to understand English and learn it with an American accent. Since we are an independent network, our reports are independent, true and accurate. The following are today's U.S. headlines. Stocks in the shortened week. On an up note, Washington moves on cyber attacks. Stocks close out the holiday shortened trading week, tiptoeing higher following a trio of economic reports. All three major stock indices gaining ground. For the week, the major U.S. indexes were mixed. Weekly jobless claims dropped to a near 15-year low, pointing to a labor market that continues to grow at a solid clip. J.P. Morgan senior economist Jim Glassman says, um, We're getting a lot of news that suggests there's some disruptions going on and GDP growth has been very slow. And yet, uh, for all the cross currents that are happening, we see jobless claims holding pretty steady and at a very low level. U.S. factory orders for February snapping a string of declines, rising to their highest level in eight months. Oil prices took yet another hit, falling as nuclear talks with Iran continue. And cheaper oil prices pushed February's U.S. trade deficit lower to $35.4 billion, not seen since 2009. Exports hit a two-and-a-half-year low, a sign that American companies are feeling the strong dollar and a weak global economy. Americans are still buying lots of used cars. Shares of CarMax surging after the country's biggest retailer of pre-owned vehicles beat profit and sales forecasts in the most recent quarter. Shares of Google feeling some heat on word that European regulators getting ready to file antitrust charges against it, according to the Wall Street Journal. Overseas, European stocks closely relatively flat ahead of the Easter holiday. America is going after cyber attackers based outside the country. President Barack Obama called a growing epidemic on online attacks from overseas a national emergency and issuing an executive order Wednesday giving power to the Treasury Department to freeze assets and bar financial transactions of those targeting U.S. computer networks. Here's Reuters reporter Jane Lanhe Lee saying. The new sanctions program follows a rise in tensions between the U.S. and China over cybersecurity. And the high profile hacking at Sony over a satirical comedy with a plot to assassinate the leader of North Korea. The U.S. pointed the finger at Pyongyang for that attack. The U.S. has also been hit by a series of cyber attacks on retailers such as Target and Home Depot and on military networks. But as the executive order is broad, some lawmakers say it could turn into a compliance nightmare for companies and warn that it was going to be tricky to pin down the criminals Obama said the U.S. would penalize those who harm critical infrastructure, misappropriate funds, use trade secrets for competitive advantage, and disrupt computer networks. No deadline has been set for when the U.S. would come up with an initial round of targets, but when it does, it will have more ammunition for the fight. A man missing at sea for 66 days has been rescued off the North Carolina coast. The U.S. Coast Guard said on Thursday, Louis Jordan's family wondered if he was still alive after he had disappeared at sea in late January. Crews searched, but were unable to locate him and close the case. Louis Jordan is being evaluated in a Virginia hospital and says he's grateful to be alive. Well, I'm just, I feel blessed and I feel full of love. I'm grateful to be with my family and, and with people again. You know, I feel grateful to have the opportunity to live, to do what I want to do, which is to produce some sort of fruit in my life, something valuable, something to make the world a better place. That's all that matters. A German flagged vessel alerted the Coast Guard that it had spotted the 37-year-old man and the vessel some 200 miles east of Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, and took him aboard. Jordan was then airlifted from the ship and was taken to a hospital in Norfolk, Virginia. Casey Radley, Jordan's sister, is overjoyed that her brother has been found alive and says her dream has come true, she said. I dreamt of this and it's you know, and every time you wake up, you're like, oh, you know, he was alive in my dream. And, and now for this to happen, it's like, it's 
like, oh, it's like my dream, and it's real. <laughs> Jordan says he had some food on his boat and caught fish with a net and collected rainwater to survive. Jordan's family will be traveling to Virginia to visit him and plan on spending Easter together. GoDaddy, the web hosting company popularly known for its outrageous Super Bowl ads, goes public. Shares have priced above the expected range of 17 to 19 at $20, pegging GoDaddy's value at $4.5 billion, including debt. The company stands to raise roughly $440 million, with around 22 million shares being offered. It's been a sleepy IPO market for, so far this year, but the GoDaddy IPO may help to wake things up. Investors have been quite eager to GoDaddy to enter the public markets. Jacqueline Kelly, a partner in Ernest and Young Strategic Growth Market, says, Pricing above its range is not unexpected, given GoDaddy was the largest IPO in the pipeline today and the overall interest in investing in brand name technology companies. GoDaddy is a mature company which offers investors solid cash flow and long-term growth opportunities. Started in 1997, GoDaddy is huge in the online domain name business with 13 million customers. And it has evolved beyond its core business to offer services like web hosting and website building to small and medium-sized businesses. GoDaddy marks one of several high-profile IPOs this year, which have included online storage provider Box & Burger chain Shake Shack. It will trade under the ticker symbol GDDY. The annual New York International Auto Show revved up Wednesday, offering a hint of what will be on the road this year and next. Autos will be infused with even more technology. Kia, for instance, is phasing out CD players and hardwired onboard navigation systems in exchange for a wireless app-based technology. Larry Dominic, Executive Vice President of TrueCar, says... Manufacturers are looking at what technologies are necessary from infotainment to safety, consumer expectations of USB connectors or Bluetooth or backup camera, and now it's things like lane departure or blind spot detection or front collision avoidance. This sophisticated technology is becoming standard, not just for luxury cars. Here's what Gene Yerman, Reuters reporter, had to say. Take, for example, this all-new 2016 Chevrolet Malibu. It offers technology that a lot of parents are apt to love. It lets them track Junior's driving habits once he's pulled out of the driveway and is down the road. For example, if he doesn't have a seatbelt on, then the radio will shut off, and the car will give the parents some sort of report card, letting them know if he's driven over a certain speed. And despite a slow global economy, auto companies are banking big on luxury here, and especially in China. GM is out with its Cadillac CT6, a potential competitor to the BMW 7 Series and Mercedes-Benz S-Class, while Ford has taken the veils off its newly revived Lincoln Continental. It's no surprise the show is packed full of luxury autos. While a minority of global industry sales, they represent as much as 40% of the profits. Mercedes is launching five new SUVs. They're raising their game in the interior space, says the company CEO in the U.S., Steve Cannon. You're going to see materials and details and finishes and fragrances and, and massage functions in chairs in, in, in the seats that will allow the customer to really, number one, customize their environment right from you can choose ambient lighting and whether you like uh, sunset orange or, or, or a deep blue to create a mood lighting uh, in, in that evening cabin space, you can do that. And as a nod to stricter em emission standards, many of the models here have been renewed with lighter frames using more lightweight aluminum and improved fuel efficiency. We'll be right back after these commercials. <laughs> 